Today, we are addressing a long-standing challenge for Mac users, running Windows on a Mac. However, with Parallels Desktop 20.3, this has become smoother and more powerful. I've been testing it out on my M1 MacBook Pro, and I've borrowed my friend's MacBook M4 II for this test, so that we can see how it performs. And I'll walk you through what's new, the performance, and whether it's worth upgrading, or even getting Parallels if you are new. Hey, Shivam here. If you would like to check it out, then you can do so from the affiliate link in the description below. As of making this video, they have 35% off, so just have a look. All right, for those who might be unfamiliar, let's talk about what Parallels Desktop does. Parallels is a virtualization software that lets us run Windows apps and even entire Windows environment directly on our Mac without rebooting. It's essentially like having a Windows PC inside your Mac. But what's impressive is just how well it's optimized for Apple Silicon Macs. It automatically detects Mac OS hardware and runs Windows 11 ARM, which is designed to run take full advantage of Apple Silicon. Whether you want to run Windows apps, play games or test software. It lets you do it all without switching devices. Now let's talk about what's new in 20.3 because the update brings some exciting enhancements. First up, we have x86-64 emulation improvement. This allows us to run even more legacy and Windows x86 apps smoothly on ARM-based Macs. For instance, older Windows games or software that previously struggled with compatibility now run much better. Early users have already pointed out the performance gains in workflow apps like older Microsoft Office versions and x86 games like Terraria. Another standout feature is the USB device support for macOS virtual machines on Apple Silicon Macs. This is a plus for developers and professionals. Devices like security keys, speciality USBs, and even debugging tools now work seamlessly in macOS virtual machines. It makes Parallels ideal not just for casual users, but also for IT professionals and developers. For streamers and content creators, now there's macOS OBS virtual camera support in Windows. If you stream on platforms like YouTube or Twitch, you can now use your OBS setup directly in your Windows apps like Microsoft Teams or Zoom. This creates an integrated workflow that that was previously missing for many Mac streamers. And to top it off, installation is more user-friendly with Touch ID authentication. No more repeatedly entering passwords, just tap and you are done, like you do it on your Mac OS. So how does Parallels Desktop actually perform? I tested it on both my M1 Pro and a borrowed M4 Pro MacBook. And here's how things stack up. When running Windows 11 ARM on my M1 Pro, boot times are under 20 seconds and the applications like Microsoft Office, Adobe Acrobat run flawlessly. However, on the M4 Pro, with its upgraded architecture, takes things to another level. Boot times are even faster at around 10 to 12 seconds and app launches almost instantaneously with a noticeable improvement. Multitasking on the M4 Pro like running Visual Studio while streaming on OBS feels smoother thanks to the updated GPU and additional processing cores. Now let's talk about gaming. I put both machines to the test with the same games. And here's what I found. With Rocket League, the M1 Pro was about 50 to 60 FPS at medium settings and the M4 Pro hit consistent 90 FPS at higher settings, making gameplay feel smoother and more responsive. On the GTA 5, the M1 Pro was about 35 to 40 FPS on low to medium settings. The game is playable but benefits of lowering resolution to enhance stability. On the other hand, the M4 Pro was about 55 to 60 FPS on medium to high settings. The M4's extra GPU power makes the game much smoother while maintaining visual quality. Now on the Minecraft, the M1 Pro was about steady 60 FPS at medium settings and the M4 maintained 120 FPS at high settings, making full use of the more powerful GPU and better memory management. With the Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, the M1 Pro was 60 FPS in standard skirmishes and the M4 Pro maintained a perfect 60 FPS even in massive skirmishes with dozens of units on screen thanks to the M4's improved efficiency. Those were the games I was able to test on these devices but if you have tested some games yourself then you can leave your experience down in the comments. However for heavier AAA games requiring DirectX 12 such as Cyberpunk 2077 or Call of Duty neither machine can provide playable performance due to the requirement of the DirectX 12. Can't save the future updates for parallels may address this 
this issue but for now these games remain out of reach. One thing I've noticed is that the M4 Pro not only delivers better FPS but also handles multitasking much more efficiently. Switching between Mac OS and Windows apps under load feels smoother thanks to the advancements in Apple's new Pro chips. If you want to push your gaming and multitasking to the next level on a Mac, the M4 Pro is a clear winner. Talking about the setup, it's easy even if you are not super tech savvy. Once you have downloaded and installed it, it will guide us step by step to install Windows 11 ARM. We can choose how much of Mac resources we want to allocate like RAM and CPU. For gaming or intensive apps, I recommend allocating at least 8 GB of RAM and 4 CPU cores. For better performance, you can split your RAM in half. Like on my MacBook, I have allocated 16 GB of RAM as it has 32. So that strikes the perfect balance between performance and multitasking. Also make sure to install Parallels tools after setting up Windows. It's a free add-on that optimizes Windows for Parallels, improving things like mouse tracking and resolutions and overall compatibility. Coming down to the price there are three editions. The standard edition is $64.99 per year and is great for everyday home use. The Pro edition is $77.99 per year, offering more advanced features like support for 128GB of RAM for each VM and up to 32 virtual CPUs. The business edition is $97.49 per year and is for organizations with centralized management need. Parallel is running a one-time sale, it's 35% off, so if you are thinking about grabbing it, so make sure to check it out the link in the description. Now here's my honest take on the Parallels desktop. It is a great solution if you are a Mac user who occasionally needs Windows for apps, development or gaming. The performance improvements in this version, especially for the Apple Silicon Macs, makes it better. That said, if you are looking to play the latest AAA games with high settings or rely on software requiring DirectX 12, you're better off with a dedicated Windows PC. But for casual gaming, productivity and development, Parallel desktop is no brainer. You can also test it out with a free trial to see how it fits into your workflow or gaming setup. So what do you think about it? Are there any specific games or apps you would like me to test? Drop them down below in the comments. Now if you are looking for a web-based vector tool, then you can watch this video. And if you are looking for a dynamic island experience on your Mac, then there you go. Like, share, subscribe, stay safe, bye-bye.